Greetings everyone, Arcanist here. Today we're going to be wrapping up with the part two of a series we started last week, Level 1 Spells Broken Down by Class. If you haven't seen that, I would highly recommend doing that one first. Now, I'm not the boss of you, so I can't stop you, but the link will be in the description for the uh, first video. I would recommend that first. Now, since there's no sponsor for this video, and I've got to eat. I'm going to shamelessly advertise for myself just a little bit. I hope you don't mind. I'm dropping content regularly on this YouTube channel, and a like and a subscription does so much to help me, especially at the beginning. You would not believe. So if you could, I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, we recently got affiliate status over on the Twitch page, twitch.tv slash the underscore Arcanist TV. Don't worry, links in description. I do D&D &D workshops weekly, and I stream content almost nightly. I've got a Patreon, website, Twitter, and Facebook. All of those are also in the description. If you've got the time, I'd highly recommend a look. It does and means a lot to me, and I cannot do this without you guys. And I appreciate everything you've done so far, but every little bit helps. So please, if you can, like, subscribe, and visit one of my other projects. And if you enjoy those, delve into those as well. Thank you. Now, let's get on with the video. Paladin's a little different here because there is very little that is bad. I'm not going to tell you what smite to take. All of them are great, and you're about to build your character. So. You know, you do your thing, but I will tell you things that are pretty dope to have. You basically get to pick whatever smite makes you the happiest. I like ensnaring strike because I like to ensnare people. It's really great to take freedom of movement away, but holy weapon is also nice. Just, you already do massive amounts of damage. Your whole thing's about critting and rolling all of those dice, so why not add an extra 1d4 radiant, but you do have to hold concentration on it. So take that as you may. Now, some of the stinkers for Paladin, I'm going to go with heroism. Yes, it's nice to stop people from being frightened. And yes, it's nice to have temporary hit points. But you don't got a lot of spells with Paladin, man. And down the road, you're going to be making everyone saving throws beefier. So they're probably not going to be frightened. Also, there are so many other ways to become immune to frightened that you don't really have to hold this burden. And once again, I... Temporary hit points have their place, but you're a paladin, you got lay on hands, you got so many other things, like focus on dealing that damage. Also, detect poison. It's cool if you think that you're gonna get poisoned, it's great to have that aha moment, but nine times out of ten, like what are you doing? Walking up to every tavern and be like, you were gonna poison me. Uh. <clears throat> the sleeper hit for paladin, in my opinion, Compelled duel. You just get to point a guy and be like, you, me, we're fighting. And they have to make a wisdom saving throw. That's pretty dope. That's taunt. And that's going to be beneficial throughout the game. Especially if your paladin's the tank. <laughs> now, next is ranger. And this is a bit of a bad one because I wouldn't recommend ranger. So I wouldn't recommend most of these spells. But... They do have some benefits. I'm gonna go with Beast Bond as one that you gotta have because basically, sure it's concentration for 10 minutes, but you get a familiar, essentially, for the lack of a better term, and it's with whatever beast that you can find that, you know, fails its save. If that's not working, Animal Friendship's pretty good. It goes for 24 hours, doesn't require concentration, but you don't get the kind of familiar aspects. You just get a charmed beast, which is still pretty good, I guess. And of course, Hunter's Mark. If you're going to play a ranger, please at the very least take Hunter's Mark. You deal 1d6 extra damage to it anytime you do damage to it with a weapon, and you get advantage on perception and survival checks to find him again. So if there's somebody that runs away or you need to make sure you get dead, you can do this. Things you want to stay away with, uh, ensnare, for sure. I don't know what they were doing when they made the ensnare spell. If you read the ensnare spell, the description of it 
is the entirety of just a snare. Sure, magically it, you know, disappears or whatever, and then it snares you. But an investigation check will still find that the snare's there, much like a real snare. Unlike a real snare, this spell makes the rope disappear. Like, the rope is gone after this. Why? Just make a regular snare. If you're a ranger, this shouldn't be a problem for you. And it shouldn't cast you a spell slot. I, yeah, don't take snare and snare. Snare. Yeah, don't take snare. It ain't, it ain't gonna help. Moving right along, alphabetically, we are at Sorcerer. Sorcerer, spells that you have to have. Now, I think most people that go Sorcerer end up being more of the offensive spellcaster when the wizard's more utility, at least at this level. Embrace that sort of vibe by going with Chromatic Orb. 3d8 damage of whatever your choice, and usually sorcerers have kind of a gimmick that they're going for. So this is great. You know, paddle that out. Pick whatever damage fits your niche, that thing that you're going for, and just hurl that chromatic orb. Now, spells that I wouldn't recommend. Witch Bolt. I know it sounds really cool. Oh, I hit you and you do 1d12 lightning, and then I use an action to do it again, and again, and again. And it's just, that's cool and all. But now you're just spending your action to do 1d12 and you're holding concentration on this. There are cantrips that do 1d12 damage and they wanna cause a spell slot or concentration. Uh, I would move things in along, just find something else. There's a lot of good stuff in the Sorcerer spell list, which bolt is just not gonna pay off for you. Now the sleeper hit that's gonna pay off for the entirety, we're looking at Featherfall. As a reaction, you can stop six people from dying that's pretty good. Five people within 60 feet of you for the duration of one minute slowly fall and do not take fall damage when they get down to the ground. Pretty dope for me. Moving on to Warlocks. Very limited spell list, but don't worry. They gave me enough for everything that I needed to do. Spells that you have to have if you're a Warlock. You gotta have Hex. I'm sorry. Much like the Ranger has to have Hunter's Mark, a warlock's got to have Hex. It doesn't mean you have to use it, but point at someone and then as a bonus action, make it go to someone else if they die. So it's going to be up the entire fight. An additional 1d6, plus they have disadvantage on one ability of your choosing. I mean, disadvantage, extra damage? What more do you want? Now, what you shouldn't get is cause fear. Well, it's cool to point at someone and be like, you're frightened. You can only do it to one person, and you're just making them frightened. There are other spells that warlocks have that make them run away from you at full speed. Which is basically frighten. Don't take cause fear. Do something that's going to be cool and takes damage. Be a cool warlock. Also, sleeper hit... Armor of Agathis. I know, Warlocks, you want to do damage, and I know I've had my sayings about temporary hit points up to this point, but, oh, when you use this on yourself, at first level, you get five temporary HP, and anyone that hits you takes five damage. At level one, maybe not great, but that increases by five for every spell slot. Not your temporary HP, the damage as well. And I know a lot of people like to make the mistake that the damage it, that is done is whatever temporary HP you have left. That is incorrect. The damage and the temporary HP are two separate things. So when you do this and you've got 30 temporary HP, and then also as long as that temporary HP, anybody that hits you is getting 30 cold damage done to you. That's a lot of damage. And, you know, actually decent amount of temporary HP. Now, on to Wizards, everybody's favorite. This is one of the larger spell lists, and it's got a lot of the things I've said to not get and to get. So this is the biggest pool for you, but specifically, as a wizard, I'm going to say you either have to get Mage Armor or Shield. Maybe both, I'm not saying don't, but 
you have to have one of those. Also, you have to either have Chromatic Orb or Magic Missile. That way you have some sort of combat ability. And I'm more to go with Chromatic Orb. I know it's not a guaranteed hit, but man, it's just so cool. Weaving a ball of fire or ice and casting at something. Rather than, mm, bunch of arcane comes at you and you take 1d4. Mm, I like a little bit more pizzazz. Me personally. Now, to talk about things that you should not take as a wizard. Tensor's floating disc. Yeah, I know, it's cool, you're supposed to use it for treasure, but man, is there a lot written in this? So it's just kind of like, oh, this rules! But then also, on top of that, it's just... I... <sighs> Your DM's probably not going to give you 500 pounds worth of treasure that you aren't going to be able to move. And even if he does, there are so many other ways around this that you, know, you can do. You don't need to waste a spell slot to make a floating disc that remains 20 feet away from you unless you get away from it and then it just follows along like a sad puppy. You're a wizard. Find a cooler way to do it than a small metal plate that has thousands of rules. The spell list for wizard already includes a lot of the sleeper hits that I've said for other classes. So, you've got your pickings, but me personally, I think a wizard's got to have a familiar. And the benefit of having a familiar is going to help you throughout the campaign. Spies, guards while you sleep, uh, assisting allies in combat, doing touch spells through them. There ain't much a familiar can't do, and it's a ritual for you, so why not? Those are the spells per class that I like to say you probably should have one of these things. They carry the essence of the caster, I, I guess is a solid way to say it. Remember, these are not indicative of things that you have to have. Make your own character. These are just for me, but personally, I think a druid's got to have good berry, and I think a wizard's got to have a familiar. But that's just me, baby. This has been fun, and thank you for stopping by, and I hope to see you next time. But until then, go make some memories.